how do we know what we know? How do we know that we're made up of billions of DNA codes that give each of us a unique identity? What makes us think that the physics of the subatomic universe are different than our own? How do we know that the clownfish and the sea anemone coexist in an odd, mutually dependent relationship? What makes us think that we can look into deep space and discover new planets? The answer to each of these questions is quite simply science. Results of scientific thinking can be found everywhere, but science is not just the accumulation of that knowledge. Science is the systematic, deliberate process that leads us to knowledge. It's how we go about trying to answer the questions about ourselves and the world around us. science. Science is the, the search for more understanding. It tries to bring order to certain, to certain chaotic or seemingly chaotic functions in the universe. My heart of hearts, in a seven word sort of thing, science is a search for truth. Science is really a very structured and controlled way of asking questions and learning how things in the world operate. Science is understanding at a basic level how something works. Science is, is, is really a philosophy. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of looking at the world. I think sciences are expressions of curiosity. That drive, that passion to, to understand things, to know something about something. After centuries of exploration, research, and contemplation, how is it possible that we're still yearning for answers? And just how will we discover the answers? That might be the clue to what science is all about. So if science is not knowledge itself, but instead the process by which we gain knowledge, how does that process work? Scientists go about their business in a fundamentally different way than most people go about their business. Scientists uh, look at the world, or look at their problem, come up with a uh, hypothesis for how this thing works. You have to think, what do you think the result's gonna be? You have to kind of guess as to what you think the result's are gonna be, and then you have to be very methodical. And then you start to think about how you might test that hypothesis, and then you go about and do those experiments, and then you come up with a conclusion about whether your, your guess for what was going on is right. Every time we come up with something, every time we discover something, there are 10 new questions that arise, 10 new things that we'd like to investigate. The science is not just all about successes. It's a lot about failures and learning from those failures and trying to apply your principles to better your experimental design. When people propose things that can't be tested, that's really not science. <laughs> I think we humans do best when we doubt ourselves, when we doubt our friends, and express that skepticism, share ideas about what might be a better solution, a better answer, another interpretation. But the key is that you always come up with conflict when you try to, to develop an area that's totally off the beaten path. Even your colleagues will say, you're crazy, this could never work, or what on earth are you doing? And then they do their best to shoot down the hypothesis. We're we're in the business of ripping down the best hypothesis. And we do that for a very good reason. And that reason is that it's really scientific truth that matters and not how good you are at presenting your hypothesis. The best thing you can do to any scientist, I think, is try to prove them wrong. Because that suggests that the question they were asking 
is one that can lead to greater truth. Consider the importance of a lawyer in the courtroom. Uh, whether you committed a crime or not, your odds of getting off are better with a great lawyer than they are with a lousy lawyer. Right? In a scientific courtroom, the lawyer is meaningless. How well you argue your point is not the issue. It's how good the point is. Because everybody's going to be in there shooting at that and trying to find flaws in it. And no matter how unpopular or how bizarre the theory might be, if it stands up to all that scrutiny, that's the dominating theory of the day. That's the real meaning of research and experimenting, a relentless pursuit for answers that generate questions that lead to more answers. Well, I think the purpose of science is to generate new knowledge uh, so that we can then develop applications on that new knowledge that will benefit human beings and, and the, the world at large. I tell people that science is, in sense, not so much a search for the answers, but really a search for and a learning how to ask the right questions, because the answers are all over. It's just that we don't know how to interpret them. What that means is you've got to figure out how to ask good questions that you can answer in a scientific manner. Everybody talks about the scientific method as a way of doing science. And, and that's, that's really, really true. There's, there's certain ways to go about um, understanding the natural world. I like that it's nature and that I get to go outdoors. In order to find these cores, I have to go out to the areas. Then when I find important sediments, um, they get sent off and they're carbon dated and then they come back and I can know the age of what I was looking through and it can be 10,000 years old. I think experimentation is an integral part of life. It's what we do in life. It's testing certain things to see how they react, seeing how humans react to certain situations, seeing how animals react to certain situations. It's trying to predict something with a model. And experimentation is the basis of what you and I do every single day when we wake up and we go to work and we shower and we try to predict who's going to make a right turn at the stoplight and different things like that. I think science is the ability to ask a question and be able to figure out what kind of data you could go out to collect to apply to answering that question. And you might never answer the question, or you might get a lot of wrong answers to the question, but every wrong answer that you get will take you closer to the truth. I like science uh, for the problem-solving aspect. And what I mean by that is I like it when the puzzle is pretty much empty and there aren't many pieces on the board. But it's a puzzle where nobody tells you where to start or where to end. Um, you've got some help from previous work because there's a lot of all science is dependent on previously done science. It's almost like detective work. You know, you get all these little clues. You, you often can't see the whole picture. And I think science is the same way. We have lots of facts. They come from all directions. We have to put them all together and come up with one conclusion. Really, science is really social. You get your ideas from talking to other scientists, from going to meetings. You spend a lot of time talking to people. And it's by talking to people and also reading the papers that they've written that you learn to understand and get ideas. Do scientists see the world differently? When I, for example, look at a tree, I don't just see those leaves. I see a magnesium sitting within a porphyrin site and knowing that a photon of light comes in and hits that magnesium. And that magnesium will then convert the photon through a series of cascades into an electron. It'll run down several proteins and start the photosynthetic process to make that tree grow. That's what I see when I look at a tree. But the rest of the world just sees these leaves. I say there's something much richer here that I see because I know something about the function of how a tree works. Just looking at patterns and how the environment is laid out, that's what, you do, that's what I do in science, essentially. And that's what's so cool, is you start seeing patterns and you start seeing, gee, the world is made up in a, in a certain way. And it's, it's predictable. You actually get more by just sitting and watching. So if you sat and watched one bird, or one, even your cat, and just watched how it's behaving. And I think you get more from that than just trying to just to race around and, and gather heaps of information. 
for instance, in the field of geology, it's so important to spend a lot of time looking at rocks because the rocks are always right. We can make our interpretations and put them on the rocks, but they're always right. And so the more time that you spend actually seeing how the world is, the more that subtly kind of bubbled up um, when you get those, those inspirations. When I go to the supermarket, I feel like I'm the premier scientist. And I think everybody is. When you go to the supermarket, you have 25 different boxes of cereal that you could buy. Well, what box of cereal are you going to buy? Some cereal is less expensive than other cereal. Some cereal tastes better. Some cereal is more healthy for you. And you have to take all of that information and come up with an answer. Which box of cereal are you going to buy? That's not obvious. How do you do that? What I like about science, I think, is uh, being on the ragged edge of knowledge. Not the, the well-established stuff is things you have to learn to be able to do science. But what I like to do is cope with the unknown and try to figure things out and to have a really unique insight. To think scientifically is, is a very um, simple thing. It's simply to ask yourself, am I wrong? I think that's ultimately what it's about. Why am I a scientist? Ever since I was a kid, I've always enjoyed being out in the bush. Being a scientist is a way of that not only lets me go out and watch animals in the bush and spend a lot of time in the bush, but it, it's also a job where I am actually paid to go and ask questions about it. So what we do is we think of a small idea and then just let our minds run with it. That's the beautiful thing about science. In no other field do you ever get paid just to sit around and think. And here we are paid to sit around and think and people don't scold us for just letting our imaginations run. You know, there's science and there's the arts. And they are, they are both ways of amassing knowledge about, about the world. Good scientists like good artists. Good artists have to be artists. They have no choice. They just, they just got to do it. And I think good scientists are the same way. You've just got to do it. You, you, you become fascinated with something. Something burns in your soul. I actually decided I wanted to be a scientist when I was in high school. And the reason for that is I had a friend, a very good friend, uh, who got sick. He got sick with cancer. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do, that I was going to cure cancer and I was going to make Mike better. And I didn't know how best to do that. But as I went through school, I, I knew I wanted to study some biology, I needed to study some chemistry, I needed to do all of these different types of sciences in order to, in order to understand what was going on. It's almost something new every minute of the day, which is really uh, a lot of fun for me, and it's a lot of, uh, it keeps you awake. You, you, you don't fall asleep in this job. Exactly, I mean, I could go to Wall Street and maybe make a killing, but do I like that? That's the key question about it. Think of science as a great adventure into the unknown. The joy of science. There's, there's actually many joys of science. Um, it's actually thinking about that question that you want to think about at 4 o'clock in the morning and put together. Even though at times it might be a little painful, it's still joyful. What I most like about being a scientist is, is those moments where you, you feel that you're learning something that Mother Nature has had there all along and no one else has realized. The sense of wonder that you really get to explore things. You get to discover a mutant that no one's ever found before. And there's just nothing like that feeling to say, ah, this is something that may really be helpful. I think the real stuff of science is not the facts. It's not the equations. It's really the dreaming and constructive dreaming. You can't just dream up an idea. You have to actually then work at it for a while. Both are important, but the dreaming is the most important part.